Hello, good evening. My name is Malik Abazda. Welcome to PM Express. And first of all, sorry for today's uh, delayed start of the program is due to some technical challenges. But he promised to uproot the governing National Democratic Congress, NDC, from power like cassava. Now he has, he has been uprooted, some say, like Yam. I'm talking about the suspended national chairman of the opposition New Patriotic Party, Mr. Paul Afuku. Mr. Paul Afuku came to office promising a new plan for power. It appears that plan is failing or is about to fail because he has been accused of working to undermine the party's chances of winning power. A member of elders, a member of the elders of the MPP, filed a petition which led to his suspension. Let's listen to what the person who filed this petition had to say, Alhaji Yirmiya. But before then, let's take a short break. When we come back, we will hear what he had to say. Stay tuned. You're welcome back. With me in the studio is head of Joyce's political desk, Evans Mensa. Evans, you're welcome. Thank you very much, Malik. Um, and we are discussing the MPP's issues, yeah. the suspension of the MPP's national chairman. Yeah. These are extra extraordinary times, wouldn't you say? For, for the MPP, obviously. Um, I, I don't think they've seen the likes of this before. Uh, I was reading about the history of the MPP sometime in 19, uh, the 1998, thereabout. They had a, a slightly different approach when, uh, similar to this, but not to the extent that somebody had to be suspended. Um, where, remember then, in those days, there was uh, Peter Lajete, who he was know, chairman was, of the was party at the, the time. Party. And, you know, then, similarly, Jay Kufo was campaigning to be the president and suggested flag bearer of the party. Of the party the exactly. And he won that. He then wanted to contest, it, of course, as a president. And for the 2000, for the 2000 elections. elections. And, and complaints came up that he had created a, a sort of a, a, a J.A. Kufour's own account in, into which uh, monies that he raised for the You're campaign was going into. talking about the Concordia into. Ventures. Exactly, you know. And it was so similar. And somebody had then written uh, to uh, Peter Lajete to step in and sanction the general secretary who was seen as backing uh, what uh, J.A. Kufour was doing then. You know, and, and we, we see that play out there. We shouldn't forget that what we are witnessing today eventually played out into a financial sort of who controls Finances the finances the of the party. And I think it's, it's at that point that this got to a head when the, uh, the national treasurer, you know, we know he sort of moved an account from an existing one into another one that deprived FOCO. And the general secretary, you know, the ability to sign and then control that account, and then we also witnessed the establishment of this online platform to raise, it generated, you know, generate its own controversy. So, so this has been this long player. coming. Yeah, it's been it's been long coming. The MPP has had that challenge. Um, I, th I guess the, the difference then to now was they dealt with. In fact, if you read if you read the petition that was written to. Uh, Alajay take then like Collins Asamoah at the Collins time. Collins about the Concordia Ventures. He was at pains to indicate that he did not want this to become a media, you know, discussion. Absolutely. And he wanted this dealt with within the ranks of the party, and the party should deal with it, you know, uh, using their own internal structures. The difference between then and now is everything else is playing out in the media, and that is what is causing. And, a lot and, of the and that's one of the problems that the the petitioners. One of the cases that the petitioners make against Afoku, Afoku. about matters being True. put in the public domain. True. But we, we, we have um, one of the petitioners, there are two people who petitioned the party's disciplinary committee. One of them is Al Haji Sulimana Yeremia. He spoke to us, he spoke to our colleague uh, uh, Stephen Anti. Let's listen to what Sulimana Yeremia had to say about the reasons why he thought it was necessary to bring this, take this extraordinary step and bring a petition demanding action against the party chairman. There are a number of issues that uh, compelled me in particular to take up this matter to the disciplinary committee. Our constitution provides that if there is anything that disturbs you or you are not satisfied, there are 
channels, there are avenues, there are structures of the party, mm. you can seek redress. That's right. Fortunately, I have been privileged to belong to the National Council of the NPP, as well as a member of the Council of Elders. Immediately after the uh, elections to select our national executive, there were certain things that were happening in the party which we thought initially that they were teeth and problems, utterances, actions. For instance, uh, immediately Paul Afoko took office, he decided to brush away all the materials that the other officers or other chairmen had already built. Mm. An example is the administrative director. He asked him, now that he has come into office, he would want to dispense of his services and probably bring a new person. Mm. And even people who were working as laborers in the party, he decided to ask them to go away. That did not augur well. So some people like us, had to call Paul Afoko to say that hold on your fire because if you come into an organization of this nature you need to seek advice. So would you say that this was perhaps over enthusiasm on his part or perhaps his nature didn't fit very well into the position he was elected into? What could make him come into office and take decisions which will be inimical to the party's unity? Oh I see. Well he can be the best person to probably uh, explain. But we thought that his actions were inimical mm. to the party's progress. If anything, he did not seem to go well with anybody. The best person is to seek advice. That's right. Because people have served the party for over 50 years and they are still there. So it was necessary for him to call these people to seek advice. But he did not. Whether it was over enthusiasm or it was sheer hatred. But why would you say sheer hatred? Why was somebody who is elected to perform roles in the party hate the same party he stood on election for and won? But why should you come? Not quite a month. You start to sack people. Why? These were the issues that confronted us. Yeah. And we felt that there was the need for us to call him to order. Mm. Some of us who were his uncles and fathers, fathers yeah. decided that, oh, maybe this is a young man. He's never held any office of the party before, not at the police station level, not at the constituency level, not to talk about the regional level. So it may be as a result of inexperience. Mm. So we will need to call him to advise him. Me being one of the elders of the Upper East region, in the company of uh, C.K. Tedam, and the former regional ministers of the party from the region, we summoned him with the hope of advising him to calm down and that anything that confronts him which he is not satisfied we could be of help. Mm. And did he honor the call? He did not honor the call. And was it once or twice or three times? On two occasions, he refused to attend to our call. So, we felt that, well, let us leave him and see what he can do. Mm. But other people were making comments, which we felt that those actions and inactions were detrimental to the progress mm. and success of the party if this attitude continues then i think we should forget about uh, power in 2016 that's right 
We've also heard from the Council of Elders who say that they made several attempts to have a chat with Afoko and then perhaps encourage him to streamline his actions so it fits very well into the party's unity agenda. But looking at the decision that has been taken now, he's on suspension. Now he's crying foul. He says he's still chairman of the, the MPP and he's on radio and TV through his spokesperson making all sorts of comments. Now, against that also, we've heard from the National Youth uh, Coalition of the MPP, the MPP Youth Coalition across the country also saying they support their next decision for that action. It does appear that all these happenings are kind of casting a negative light on the MPP. Do you see it like that? Oh, for us, we have been in the MPP party for a very long time. Mm. Times uncounted. There had been such storms before, but the storms came, we prevailed, and it is now it went a away. thing of the past. So you think this is a storm that the MPP will prevail Oh, over. definitely. It will take no time at all, and this shall pass. And you won't worry when people say, perhaps, the decision of the National Executive uh, Council and the Disciplinary Committee to sanction AFOCO is actually uh, an indication that perhaps they are not pro-northness or perhaps they are <laughs> ethnically um, uh, biased to people of northern extraction? I don't think so. I'm a northerner. The chairman of the Council of Elders is a northerner. So where lies that allegation? Hmm. That is the, then is the northerners themselves who think that their own brother cannot handle the affairs of the party. Yeah, welcome back. You had uh, Al Haji Yirmiya. Al Haji Yirmiya, as I said, he filed a petition uh, which was submitted to the disciplinary committee of the MPP, which uh, the MPP, the, the committee deliberated on and recommended his suspension. This recommendation was endorsed by the National Executive Committee. Mr. Focus' lawyer vehemently disagree with the views expressed by Al Haji Yirmiya in the entire process that led to Mr. Afoku's uh, suspension. Fortunately, we have a member of Afoku's legal team joining us on PM Express tonight. Mr. Martin Kebu, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. You heard um, Al Haji Yirmiya's arguments. You disagree. Very much so, you know, for a lot of reasons. It is the case that we've, we are where we are now, okay? as a result of a lot of things that went wrong with the disciplinary proceedings, okay? So in actual fact, in law, what has happened thus far is a nullity. And I repeat, what has happened so far is a nullity. Nothing has been done. Because one, when we went before the committee, uh, in actual, before Alaji's petition was received, there was a previous petition. We raised two preliminary legal objections. One, that is bias against Professor Mike Okwe and Madam Amabuzia. And the reason is because those three people were members of the, uh, the Council, Council of Elders and members of the Disciplinary Committee. That's correct. And also, number two, we raised the objection that the committee didn't have the jurisdiction to deal with this matter. Now, in law, that, sec that second legal objection, when it is raised, the authorities are settled, and I keep saying there are over 100. If time permits, I can cite them all, okay? that if you don't answer that question, you can't take any further step. Martin, but there was no need to answer that question because the petition that was determined on the basis of which Paul Afoko was suspended was not that one. Very good. Now, this morning, you, you interviewed me. I, mean, I was in the studio earlier, and I told you that that was the first time I was hearing as counsel for Mr. Afoko that the decision was not based on that petition. Then why weren't we told that the petition had been discontinued? That's the one brought by the Council of Elders. Fortuitously, when we got Alaji's petition, we wrote the same objection. So you were aware of Alaji's petition? That's correct, yes. But, but if you were aware of Alaji's petition, what was in the mind of the lawyers? Were you thinking that they were taking all three petitions together? Or? That's correct, until they tell us otherwise. Oh, because in law, they were taking them together because in law they can do what we call consolidation. If, the matters relate, if they, they relate to the same subject matter, you can put them together. So for us, we didn't, uh, I mean, we didn't have occasion to object to that. So there were two pending objections. Or in actual fact, three. In the case of the Council of Elders case, there was an objection against bias. 
and then also jurisdictional objection. Then in the case of Alaji Jeremiah's uh, petition, we had the jurisdictional objection. And do you know what happened, uh, Malik? Okay, For the let's, case sitting, let's deal with the case of jurisdiction. Yes. What were the, what were the basis of your uh, objection? What were the basis of your preliminary objection? Okay. Um, why did you think that the committee lacked jurisdiction? Very good. Now, if you refer back to this constitution, that's the MPP constitution, Article 4. Okay, Article 4, we have clause, Article 4, clause 3. 3C. 3C. Okay. 3C. Yes, if you read 3C, that is where the National Discipline Committee seems to anchor their jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. But if you go to 3D, and that's my case, uh, may I read? It says, uh, a member aggrieved by or dissatisfied with the conduct of any member of the constituency executive committee shall file a complaint in writing to the regional executive committee. A complaint against a member of the regional executive committee shall be made to the national executive committee. And in the case of the national executive committee, to the national council. So Malik, that is our case that once this one is specific for executive members in law, but let me you just are learn. a lawyer. Yes. You are a lawyer. Yes. When you read provisions of a law, yes. um, I am thinking that the arrangement matters. Very if good. you have um, an arrangement, you, if you have a provision, which is uh, Article 4A3C, That's correct. Which, is, um, which comes before 3D, mm -hmm. and 3C says the National Disciplinary Committee shall have jurisdiction in all matters, mm -hmm. emphasis, mm -hmm. all matters mm -hmm. affecting discipline mm -hmm. at the national level with respect to national executive officers and key members of the party with mm -hmm. respect to national executive officers. Mm -hmm. So you are bypassing this uh, provision, that's 3C, mm -hmm. which actually clothes the, the disciplinary committee with powers to deal with all matters regarding anybody, including national executive committee members. And you are going down to read a subordinate one, and you are relying on that one. That's correct, because in law, we are allowed to do that. Now, this is, these are the principles. But we so have why we do you pass the first law, and you are relying on the second good. one, when the first one takes precedence? No, rather, in law, the second one takes precedence. This is, let me explain. The first one, you see, it lists national executive officers, members of parliament. You see, it's a whole lot. So in law, we will call the three C the general rule. When it comes to 3D, it's specific about executive members. That these are elected persons, elected in the party. Okay? Uh -huh. So this latter one pre uh, takes precedence over the earlier one. Okay? Uh, I don't want to do the that's, Latin that's anymore. Strange. Yes, uh, but there's a Latin uh, 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 principle uh, uh, for it. Uh, uh, my, 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 my concern is, and I guess clarification I'm seeking, is it your case that the complaint should have gone to National Council and not to the... Committee. That is one of it. That, that in any event should have gone there. That's one. But even even if it were to okay, so let's rest it there. Reading 3C and 3D specifically. So we call this the specific one, the special rule for executive members. And don't forget the difference that these are elected. When you come here, yes, MPs are elected, but not in the party. MPs stand for election generally. But look at the three Ds that these are elected officers. You know, you know why? So, you know why reading the party's constitution? I think this position sounds to me a bit absurd. Let me let me tell you why. Because if you read further, in fact, if you go to uh, Article on Appeals mm -hmm, Six, mm -hmm. it talks about the fact that you you only you activate the uh, Council of Elders. Mm -hmm. It's like, the, it's like the Supreme Court of the party. It's like the final place you go for an appeal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if the argument is that you start your petition what, from, from the, the council National of... Council, <laughs> then it creates an absurdity. Because I, I want to read, even, even, even beyond saying, I want to read for the evidence of that. And, and it says, a member aggrieved by or dissatisfied with a decision of the National Executive Committee may, within 21 days of receipt of the notice of the decision, appeal against it mm -hmm. um, and the appeal is to, to the national council mm -hmm. by filing an appeal in writing with the general secretary the national council shall conclude its deliberations on the appeal within 14 days of receipt of the appeal and its decision shall be final and binding on all affected parties so my question as i'm not a lawyer mm -hmm. i'm just a political an animal mm -hmm. and a journalist there's if you're saying that we should start the uh, so the petition, the, the petition should have been sent council. to to the national council. How festival. how do you send a petition to a, the council, which your constitution says later on in your in your own? If you were to appeal, exactly. Where will it go? 
-hmm. Because they're supposed to be the final arbiters in, in any case. For me, that, for me, in my mind, it creates an absurdity. Either, some, either your case is weak or your constitution has a problem. Very good. So I'll just stop at that. You know what we'll do? Because, so I like you said, either or, meaning that there is what? An interpretative issue. I'll rest my case there. Because, you know, you've taken a position that for you, it, it seems absurd. You see, to be candid, because I'm because, a lawyer, you are not. Because for, to do a legal argument, no, 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 very no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm speaking as yes. a layperson. Oh, forgive me. From a layman, uh -huh. it's, I'm saying that either your constitution has a problem, has Good. created this absurdity, yes. or somebody's case is, isn't uh, strong enough. Yes, and i like to join you there because then we can make sense. Because I like that for you, since you've read it, you've seen that there's a discrepancy, yeah. and that is what the law is for. So all the committee had to do was to dis re resolve for us so that I don't have to spend time educating you why uh, we think this is better. At least, I'm very happy that you have seen that there is a problem. So solve that problem first. That is it. So Evans, you've analyzed but, it right. But, but, but okay, Martin, we didn't get that answer. Martin, there were, there were other issues. Mm -hmm. uh, when we spoke in the morning on um, the Super Morning Show, yes. Alhaji Yirmiya mm -hmm. emphasized mm -hmm. that on three occasions, yeah. when the disciplinary committee invited Mr. Fuku, mm -hmm. he didn't turn up. The first one, he sent your, um, your yes, very self. Yes. And of course, you are mm -hmm. counsel for. Yes. You went and said Mr. Fuku was unwell. Mm -hmm. And the second time, he was still unwell. Mm -hmm. And I remember when he raised the issue about that same day that you brought medical report that said he was unwell, mm -hmm. he attended a steering committee meeting four in Four hours afternoon. later. At least four hours later. Now, let me come to the beginning. You see, please, let's not mix the issues. One, I mentioned that when we went... Apart from our oral submissions, we had these uh, preliminary objections which we put on the table that answer this. So what I'm saying is that, and don't forget, these are civil proceedings. Our law, according to the Constitution, is that it is only in criminal proceedings that the accused must be present at all times. But what we are faced with here are civil proceedings, the and party, that is not so. Yep. So let me land on it. The point is that being civil proceedings, we put objections on the table. So if Mr. Foucault were there, he wouldn't have to do this. This is a legal way. The so his committee members, the disciplinary committee members are not just looking at the law. You are a lawyer. Your job is to do the law. The disciplinary committee members are looking beyond that. But you hold your thought. We have to take a break. When we come back, we will continue with this discussion. Stay tuned. Yeah, welcome back. We are discussing the suspension of the national chairman of the New Patriotic Party. With me in the studio are my colleague Evans Mensa and one of Mr. Foucault's lawyers, Martin Pebu. Martin, you were raising the question of jurisdiction, That's and right. um, we had differing opinions mm -hmm. on this. I just want to quote to you, mm -hmm. uh, still on Article 4, mm -hmm. Article 4A5A mm -hmm. mm -hmm. of the MPP's constitution. Mm -hmm. This article says disciplinary proceedings, and I'm talking about the jurisdiction, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. disciplinary proceedings mm -hmm. may be initiated by a complaint in writing mm -hmm. delivered to the disciplinary committee in so far as a complaint relates to the affairs mm -hmm. of the party. Mm -hmm. So if you have a complaint mm -hmm. against anybody, mm -hmm. anybody at all, mm -hmm. as far as it relates to the party, mm -hmm. you submit it to the disciplinary committee, mm -hmm. and that that initiates, that invokes the jurisdiction of the disciplinary committee. Mm -hmm. So your suggestion mm -hmm. that that petition has to be sent to the National Council is not supported by this provision. Check Article 4A5A. Okay, great. But, yes, so you see you've identified something. Let's also go to 43D. It says that a member aggrieved by or dissatisfied with the conduct of any member, blah, 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 shall file a complaint in writing, then if you come to the National Executive, to the National Council. So you see, there are two different opinions. So what I'm doing is that uh, because we are limited in time here, what I'll tell you is that I agree, you see problems. So that is why we ask the committee to resolve. Uh, That's uh, the shortest uh, way can to raise. Can I say something on that? Yes. What you read talks about a member aggrieved. Yes. A member aggrieved, mm -hmm. for me as a layperson, mm -hmm. says... A certain pro process mm -hmm. had been undertaken, mm -hmm. and he or she is aggrieved at that process, and therefore, in writing, mm -hmm. goes to uh, a superior body. Aggrieved. That's, oh. what, you, that's what you write. Respectfully, I... Mine is more of, of an inquisition than yeah. a statement. Yes. Because 
you say and mm -hmm. what you read mm -hmm. points a member aggrieved by mm -hmm. or dissatisfied with mm -hmm. the conduct of any member of the constituency executive committee mm -hmm. shall file mm -hmm. now a complaint against a member of the regional executive committee shall be made to the national executive committee and in case of the national executive committee to the national council mm -hmm. so this is talking about an individual who is aggrieved mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at a decision taken by yeah. the, the the neck mm -hmm. either at the regional or the national mm -hmm. level mm -hmm. and therefore goes to at the regional at the national level if you agree to go to the national council mm -hmm. that is why when i read the six it mm -hmm. talks about mm -hmm. the national council in terms of appeal mm -hmm. be, is the most superior body mm -hmm. so wouldn't you wouldn't you agree with the fact that this really is talking about ha having gone through a process and not being happy with the way the process has gone, and therefore you are grieved, and therefore you go a step further. Which is different from if you Starting have a concern, a, a you are actually initiating. Exactly, because initiating you, the process. If you look at uh, five four five a, mm -hmm. it says disciplinary proceedings may be initiated, mm -hmm. initiated mm -hmm. by a complaint in writing mm -hmm. delivered to the disciplinary committee, in so far as the complaint relates to affairs of the party. Good. I've Four answers. Let's start. One, you see, that's what I say. It's tricky when you want to do legal analysis with a lawyer. Look, when you see the word maybe in law, it's permissive. That is not the only path to use. When you see may, it's permissive. It's permissive. That is not the only way to go about it. It means they may be. And so we will come to uh, four, three, D. That's one. Then number two, where uh, you see, what? number two, let me land. Your question was, look, it's very important. You see, what is, you, 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 we are all missing is that, uh, even granted, let, let me grant you that you are right. When we went to the uh, disciplinary committee, we told them that in our estimation, we don't, you don't have jurisdiction. In law, what I'm saying is that no matter how spurious, even assuming without admitting that our grounds were, uh, this, um, uh, Weak, okay. Assuming just for the sake so of yes, argument, as, as important as substantive. That, that is it. So we put the uh, the objection on the table. Clear it. The law says that if you don't clear it, you can't move. So Malik, what I'm saying, I like the way you guys when you read it. So you see that there are problems. Yes, that is what we call issues in law. That you've read it one way. He's also read that. Yes, we'll grant you that. So it is up to the committee to look at the two. The committee thinks they have jurisdiction under three, uh, four, three C. We say no, they don't have under four three D. Give us a ruling. If you don't, so, you can't so, move. So, so in what's, the what's your what's 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 your argument that if the petition were to be submitted to the national council, then what? Oh, then the national council has to deal with it. But the national council is not a disciplinary committee. The national council does not take disciplinary decisions. Oh yes, the national no, council no, no. is only an appeal body. No, 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 no. I disagree. It means that it's an appellate body for certain persons. But for other persons, it is a court of original jurisdiction. But, but Please. they are not. Please. But they are not a body so, that uh, hears uh, a complaint initiated by any member of the party. They oh no! Well, I've just shown you that. No, 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 no. And, and, you know, yeah, I, Malik, I since, since this conversation, I, I'm trying to read again. Yeah. And I'm I'm now coming to a sense that my earlier position was absolutely right. Mm -hmm. If and you, you lawyers mm -hmm. always say. Mm -hmm. Don't read a particular clause yes. in isolation. isolation. Yes. Just read the the paragraph just before the D mm -hmm. that he reads the back mm -hmm. his point. It tells you mm -hmm. that that whole passage mm -hmm. is talking about how you deal with grievance with the disciplinary committee's decisions. It says the National Disciplinary Committee shall have jurisdiction to hear appeals appeals right from the decision of the Regional Executive Committee. Please, so he's talking about for me yeah, and, and for me for me to do for me for me to go to law for me for me no no for me I mean but, 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 hold on hold on I mean for, for me for me it's clear here yeah. that that your constitution is talking about in this case talking about appeals yeah, appeals no. and that is why again and I'm saying for me as said it makes no it abs no. It's absurdity it when it talks about proper appeals for the national officer he says. And it's very clear. Go to the national council. You see, in law, we don't. Count but when you're initiating, when you're initiating, you go to this. That's, that's, so that's your committee. opinion because you know this platform. You're entitled to an opinion. But please, in proper legal analysis, we don't come lightly to a okay. conclusion that there's an absurdity. I beg you, please. We spend years 
rules of interpretation. When you see the books on interpretation, master, they are big, big, big books. Martin, I, mean, I know what you're talking about. Area. I know let's, what you're let, talking let's about. It does not also that's mean why that... I'm granting you your opinion to a certain extent, but let's not over push it. No, but to the that's fine. But the, the Council of Elders yes. brought a petition, and that was not the substance, that was not the basis upon which this decision was taken. Yeah. It was but please, as I said, yeah, I didn't know. It was this, this morning point, on radio that I was told about that. We are feared as counsel for Mr. Foucault, so the committee couldn't tell us at what stage they withdrew that petition, at what stage it became moot. Oh, what kind of proceedings then are they? At this point, we don't know that, that because so we don't have a member of the disciplinary committee here. Good. So but it's that is your point. So at this point, we do not know whether okay. they, they ruled on your uh, preliminary objection <laughs> or not. Um, so are you going to court? Not, not, not yet. Not yet. Because as it were... Do you intend to go to court? Uh, it depends on the instructions of the client. But as it says now, it's most likely to go to the National Council. Okay, because... Maybe he would want to exhaust the local remedies. Yes. So, so we should expect um, an appeal to be sent to the National Council. No, the same National no. Council that you see should have been the, the appropriate for forum yes. for yes. him to have uh, for the petitioners to have sent their petition. Yes. Well, you let's take a break. Um, when we come back, we will take views of the Chairman of the Council of Elders of the MPP, C. K. Tedam. Stay tuned. I myself, I talked. He said no, he didn't come. He just was indifferent to everything. And we believe that the only way we can do this matter is to let the disciplinary committee take it up upon themselves. Because he can't go to the chairman who is, he can't be judging his own case. And so the justified way was to bring him. And we only ask that he should be disciplined. He should be disciplined. He should be asked perhaps to wait until things are put in shape before he can come in. Since he couldn't even go in. It climax, the climax of it all was the death of the uh, Upper East Regional Chairman, uh, Adams. And uh, I, I believe it shocked Ghana, not we alone. And not because we are northerners, but because we are the fathers and mothers of the new patriotic party. We took it upon ourselves to rally people together to bring peace and harmony. So the simple and the long and the short of it is that we planned to bring peace, but Parafoko would not cooperate. He simply wouldn't cooperate. His father was my very good friend. I assisted him to come to Council of State to join us. And we were met in school. And we were very good friends. When he came, I helped him in various ways to settle down. Paul Afoko himself, when he came to Ghana, he and myself and his father helped to resettle him. So I have no ill feelings, and there's nobody who has ill feelings towards him. If today he agrees to reconcile with the party, the party can find a suitable place for him to play his role in the politics. But this one where he will lead all of us into disaster, and we talk and he wouldn't listen. I told him at one of our meetings, the National Steering Committee, of which I won, I told him, at the National Executive Committee, I told him that he is to, to cooperate with us. If he does not cooperate with us, he is spelling his own doom. You're yeah, welcome back. You had the Chairman of the Council of Elders of the MPP, C.K. Tedam. Uh, he was a Council of State member under Kufo's uh, regime. But Evans, um, listening to Martin's argument, Martin's view is that the law is on their side. Um, in the event that Afoku wins the case, um, the law is on his side. He, he, he files a, a, an appeal at the National Council. This appeal is determined and the decision of, uh, of uh, NEC is overturned. Um, it's, it's not good for politics. No, it's not good for politics. It's, it's, I, I get the legal argument, but what is happening is not good for politics. And it's happening at the wrong time. Wrong time because you have 12 months to a major, major election. A major election that will, is make or break for the party. You don't want to, first of all, my point is, if the party wanted to take this decision, they should have done it long ago. Because if Afoko goes to court, you're going to have an election year and still have a major case in court, possibly. Still trying to fight it out. 
and you're going to an election, you have to campaign. That will detract. But also, I think, Afoko is really not helping his cause and the cause of the party. I felt that the very moment that he became persona non grata, so to speak, in the Upper East region, he should have stepped aside and allowed somebody else to be at the helm to the 26th. Martin would disagree with you on absolutely that. Absolutely, he will. That's correct. So absolutely you made he will, by the interest of the party. You made two submissions. The first one I agree with, which is that these proceedings are ill-timed. And as I mentioned, they are in my submissions to the committee. All along, we've indicated that the proceedings are ill-timed. So they should terminate everything in the interest of their party unity and their elections. We've, uh, I've shown you copies whilst we're on break. So it's not the case that... Uh, as in well, that same interest, do you think he should pursue this matter to the High Court? Oh, that's correct. Because he's been elected, okay, he's been elected, and due process must be followed. Why the haste? We put a preliminary legal objection. Why the haste to go and give recommendations when you've not cleared it? When the law is crystal clear, settled, that all lawyers will agree that when such an objection is put, if you don't clear it, you cannot make any move. Oh, please. So you are voting for um, going to court? Oh, we haven't reached there yet. If we get there, we will uh, Evans, decide. What do you think? I, I, I think in the interest in of the party, seconds. In the, they shouldn't go to court. I think they should find a political solution and not a legal Which one. has eluded them. Well, there's still time to find a political solution. If both, uh, in t Tedham said that, that if he's willing to reconcile, we'll find a way for him to play his role. For me, that sums it up. That's what they should be pursuing. And that sums this discussion up. Uh, it's been PM Express started late, but it picked up. We have had an exciting discussion. Uh, Ketsi Evans Mensa, head of Joy Political Desk, and uh, Martin Pebu, one of the lawyers for Mr. Paul Afuku. God willing, tomorrow we will bring you another discussion on PM Express. My name is Malika Bazdabu. Good night.